Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report right here on Cox. Andy Michelle, Matt Hatfield. You got the playoff jacket on. We got regional quarterfinals and some state berths on the line. I had to bring the corduroy out as we get closer to the state tournament in March. Playoff action. I'm so ready for it here. We'll start things off in Norfolk, Andy. The Norview Pilots taking on the Bethel Bruins. Norview at 16 and 8. Bethel 20 and 4 overall. Bethel saw their 18 game winning streak snapped against Hampton in the Penn South Conference Tournament Championship. So you know they are angry. It's bizarro world. Even though they're the visiting team, they're playing on their home floor is Norview. To start things off, all the inside pass blew to Lamont Stewart to get things off and running. First team all-conference performer Stewart is for the Pilots. Now Bethel operating behind Jeremiah Awusu. Pull-up jumper is money for the Bruins. So many weapons for Coach Craig Brion. We saw Stewart earlier and we'll see him again here. This time though, not as good. But the rebound ahead here is Keontae Johnson. Oh, the stuff. Talented sophomore. We'll be seeing him doing things like that and hitting three-pointers for years to come for Jonathan Wilson's crew. Now Kyle Foster with the deep three-pointer. It's money. Just go ahead and tuck that up from anywhere. Long time three, big time three. Back the other way, look at that finish on the move by Sean Banks. All right, do it against the six foot 11 center. Dejour Dickens trying to block his shot. Right here though, Foster coming back, no good, but Dickens oh. gets redemption with the put back jam. Highlights galore on this one early in the first quarter. As that one finishes, 13 to 11, Norview on top. Here's the replay. The visiting team up two at home, but look at Dickens, 6 11. That's why he's one of the top recruits nationally in the class of 2017. Norview, though, not phased at all. They've been in a lot of big battles this year with Maury and Green running those conference foes, so they're ready for this postseason battle. So, too, is William Steger with the deep three. Steger from way outside. Bethel trying to hang on the on the road in home weights. It's weird. Here's Cam Bayco. That's not weird. That's money. Bayco from three. Some range on that shot for Bayco, younger brother of Old Dominion's Aaron Bayco. He's making a name for himself at Bethel too. 21 all. We're deadlocked. Going to the second half. In the second half we go. We switch in. One thing we don't switch is Blue getting smocked by Dickens. Dickens swats that shot up ahead though to Foster. Nope. Three pointer for Foster. Another one. You know what the coaches say, defense can ignite the fast break on the other end as Ned found Foster in transition there. William Steger oh. gets swatted again by Dickens, oh. who blocks Johnson, but second oh. effort is good for Keontae. The two blocks on one possession, just not quite enough. Johnson kept with it. Other side, rebound, long rebound, tip controlled by Dickens, and outside, guess who that is? Yep, that's him again. Foster from outside. He's knocking him down left and right from the perimeter. A nice addition to this Bethel team coming from Peninsula Catholic a year ago. Steger will hesitate and then find Jalen Frazier. He won't hesitate. He'll knock it down for three. We got a three-point contest going on here. Foster and Frazier are going back and forth. And we got a three-point game as we head to the fourth quarter. Norview still on top. Frazier makes some crucial plays, drawing a couple charges in the fourth quarter. And the Pilots trying to extend their lead now against that Bethel pressure. It's Kevin Marks to Johnson, and they break the press for two. Got to get that off quick. Dickens in there. He still almost got a hand on that, but the end one for Johnson. That makes it a five-point game for Norview as we're ticking down. Now it's a seven-point advantage, and Dickens misses the free throw here, tries to get the rebound, and uh-oh, he's called for his fifth foul. He is done as Lamont Stewart corrals the rebounds. It's going to be hard to come back without that rim protector. That hurts. That hurts a lot. This hurts even more. Owosu on the run out. Look at the finish, powering that thing up. 54-48, the final. No job for Dickens to finish and that hurts. Norview with Keontae Johnson's 15 points, Jalen Frazier chipping in 11 points, nine rebounds, two blocks. Really the unsung hero in this game while Jeremiah Wusu led the charge in defeat for Bethel. 21 points for him, eight of 13 from the floor, five rebounds. So Andy, Norview is moving on to the state tournament. Bethel is done. Bethel is done. Bethel girls not done though as we switch to the ladies side. Bethel in action against Salem. Salem coming off that loss to Princess Anne in the Conference 9 championship game, but a resurgent year for them under Coach Donnie Stith. Meanwhile, Bethel coach Roy Johnson's team trying to get back to the state tournament after losing last year's heartbreaker to Cosby. Well, this was a pretty good matchup here. We see early on here is Salem spinning around. They go inside. Yeah, I guess who that is. That's Brianna Jackson. You're going to hear that name a lot. She spins and goes glass to get things started for the Sun Devil. She's a major factor in the paint. A 6'3 freshman who can get it done. Now Bethel on the break. It's Dave Andrea Braxton. One of their key scores for them as they answer that Salem score inside. 
Almost a steal. Not quite enough, though. Not quite enough makes you pay, because there is Kayla Hannibal from three. A nice triple for Hannibal. And a 12 to 4 lead for the number two seed Salem over top seeded Bethel in this showdown in 5A South region play. Now Bethel trying to get away from that Salem trap, and it's going to be a pull up jumper good for Nadia Roberts. Roberts with the elbow, Jay. Look at the ball movement down low. Eventually it goes out to Jordan Miller for three. All the options are developing for Coach Stiff at Salem. You got Jackson Hannibal, Miller, and then Jasmine Steven here. She's going to pull up just inside the arc and get it to go. That's a bad shot. You only want to take one step back for three, but you'll take it. I don't, I don't think the coach says that's a bad shot. Meanwhile, we'll move it around. Look at the movement. This is Daly on the drive. The little point guard getting inside. Such confidence for this young Salem team coming of age here in the postseason. Now a pump fake for Hannibal, and then she'll drive to the 10 and get it to go off glass. Hannibal inside, and the face finish. High, high bank from Desiree Whitley, and it goes. That's like a, a skyscraper bank. Now a three-point shot in the corner. It is in for Jordan Miller, and now they're going in the post. Feed Jackson inside, and it's going to be a lot of action Jackson. They start the second half, they go to Jackson. Why wouldn't you go to Jackson? So let's let's do it again. Inside, off the glass, finishing with the left hand is Jackson this time. Being single covered, a double team not coming quick enough here. And now they drive and dump it off. Great pass by Hannibal, finding Jackson inside. Any pass to Jackson is a good pass. Here she takes it all the way or by herself. Hannibal scores on the runner that time. Well, the bleeding starting to happen for Bethel now. Can they come back? Well, they're going to put the ball in the hands of Devondria Braxton to try to lead the comeback. She'll feed it in the post against Jackson. Oh, the ball movement is pretty here as McKenna Holloman scores it. Then Bethel's not done yet, though. They're looking to get a comeback. They need somebody to spark it. Norea Williams from outside. She'll try to spark it. Then Williams, well, well, we did it from outside. Let's take it all the way inside and one. And Williams is psyched. We can do this. We're going to come back. Oh, those Bethel fans at that Kempsville High gym getting excited. Their team down nine, but no quit in them. They've been in the States before. They want to go back. Now you see a deflection here. Salem, though, they'll get the ball inside to Jackson, and she's fouled. Ooh, oh, that's a toughie. so close. That's a tough call. Inside underneath, but Jackson at the free throw line. Yes. Connects on the free throw. Ice water in the veins for Jackson. A couple of key makes there. And now a three-point opportunity. Ooh. It is in for Jasmine Steven. Nothing but the bottom of the net there at the Sun Devils. Holding tight there and showing their poise. A little defense here, though. Bethel trying to make something happen. Look at inside Daly again. The point guard gets inside, misses, but there's who. Yep, that's Jackson again. Three people around her. She still goes up with it. Tough to win when the other team's getting those second chance points, and Salem got enough of them prevailing and moving on to the next round where they will face Princess Anne, their old rival in the beach. 50 to 36, the Sun Devils win behind Jackson's double double of 19 points, 13 rebounds. She also blocked three shots. Meanwhile, Bethel in defeat got 10 points from Devondria Braxton. We go out west for some more ladies' action. Stay with us. Sports Report continues right here. Welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. We've checked out some private school boys basketball action, Andy, but now it's the girls' turn as we see the North Cross Raiders take on the Chatham Hall Turtles as these two teams getting ready to close out their seasons. You got white, uh, North Cross in the white, Chatham Hall in the blue. All right, early on, some inside passing there. Good feed and a good finish from Audrey Lemon with the runner. Audrey Lemon and Madison Charles, two to watch out for for North Cross here, and you see North Cross getting a second chance there. That'll be Natalie Lemon kicking it back out to the top of the key to Emily Alara. Moving the ball around the perimeter, being very patient. That Offensive one. rebound. Got to block out. That's Lemon again. That's Audrey Lemon for her second score of the game. Turtles trying to answer, and they hurry just a little bit here, and that leads to some fast perk opportunities with Julia Brown for the Raiders here. She just dodges defenders on her way to the hoop for two. Brown going all the way that time, and this is not a replay. Brown gets the rebound off the same wing, does the same thing up the floor. This time she can't quite finish it, though, but N.K. Dindev is there to finish it. What can Brown do for you? Well, she can score for North Cross, I can tell you that. The Turtles there operating in the dark. As you see, they try to get it in the paint, but oh, it's a turnover. That's a steal for N.K. Dindev, and now they're going to actually slow it up here. And then, oh, we're going to fool you and throw it up ahead for a layup. Up ahead to Brown, so it was Brown to Dindav, now it's Dindav to Brown. They, they shared the ball there. 
A good teamwork there now. It's Claire Moran trying to get something going. She finds the bank shot there. It's open for Robin Bach. The bank is open. However, her team's down 18 at the break. At the break. So we'll have to see if we can get some kind of something turtle magic or something going here for inside Chatham Hall, outside. You know, they get to the baseline. There's a good move right there. That is Moran finishing hard down on the baseline. A nifty maneuver from Moran, the top scorer for Chatham Hall on the air. Now it's a steal, and that generally leads to quick opportunities scoring for the other team, and it'll be another layup here. It's Natalie Lemon, Audrey Lemon. Everybody's getting on the act for the Raiders. Turtle still trying to find something. Do we have any turtle? No, we don't have turtle magic. Back the other way, it's another steal, and it's Natalie Lemon this time. We've got a lot of lemons finishing courts. Now it's another turnover for Chatham Hall, just not there. The other lemon. Audrey Lemon. Two lemon. Up ahead there, and Natalie Lemon, Audrey Lemon, Julia Brown, too much for Chatham Hall here as the deficit is growing. Another steal and wide open there is Julia Brown. Oh, look at the shrewd ball movement by this North Cross team as Catherine Lake scores it. Back the other way, here come the Turtles. Turtles need to do something here. We gotta find some movement. We got ball movement, we got that. Uh oh, we got ball movement to the other team though. That's not good. That is Madison Charles going the, all the way by herself on the steal and score. Doesn't look like Channel Hall will get their first win of the season in this matchup. As you see, North Cross now patiently attacking that defense. They take it in, pull it back out, looking for a better shot, a more quality shot. Right there, you see foul line pass, three pointer, it is in. Big three pointer from the outside from Charles. Now we have Ninja Turtles. Do we have any Ninja Turtles? We don't have Turtle Magic. Do we have Ninja Turtles? Maybe some Turtle Doves. We're looking at, nope, nope, there's none of that. But there is, there's more Raiders. It's another steal, another score for Aurora. Yeah, you Aurora. see so many different weapons stepping forward for North Cross in this game. And you see the double team here is, you know, with this Chatham Hall offense very uh, hesitant at the moment. Three. But there's a triple good for Claudia Muhammad. It won't be enough. 51 17 as North Cross wins behind. 25 points from Madison Charles and Julia Brown in defeat for Chatham Hall. Claudia Muhammad and Claire Moran combining for 13 points. Andy, when we come back, we've got some more boys basketball action. Back to the regional quarterfinals right here. Stay with us. Sports Report continues right after this. Back to Sports Report, you went to commercials, we stayed right here. We've got more action for you though, more regional quarterfinals coming up. It's the 4A East Region Tournament with the Lake Taylor Titans. They're known for winning titles in girls basketball and football. Trying to do it this year in boys basketball, Kenny Brown's crew is. Taking on the Jamestown Eagles, a program on the rise under first year coach Donovan Bridgeforth, 17-5 and five overall. Lake Taylor at home with the early advantage. And they will get to move it with Darion Sebron finding Gay Miller for three. And that one's off the mark. However, they have athletes to get those second chances. JT Wahi Sky for a rebound and two. Wahi in tight amongst the trees. Was able to pull it down. Here comes Connor Swain on the put back. Oh, look at the jam. Can we call that a jam? We'll call that a jam. Swain with the stuff. The Eagles trying to get some offensive rebounds, turning them into points themselves. 16 to 12 in favor of Lake Taylor. Early second quarter action. Now it's Joe Bryant, the sophomore, getting a screen it looked like from Darion Sabron. Gets it back from DeMonte Tyler. Looking to see if he can attack here off the bounce. Instead, he'll pass it back to Tyler, who will pull up and can the jumper. Elbow jumper for Tyler. Good. And it is a nine-point lead for Lake Taylor out up early. Titans 19-4 and four overall coming into this matchup. And Jamestown misses there on the driving move. It's Bryant with the rebound up ahead of Daz Palmer and the alley-oop for Wahi. Oh, it's a football connection. Palmer to Wahi. Could not stuff it, but still a pretty good finish right there. And Lake Taylor up by 11 after Jamestown knocks down a free throw with 3.55 to go in the second quarter and a steal by Gabe Miller. And when Lake Taylor gets steals, it leads to this. Slam. JT Wahi throwing it down. So he made up for it. He couldn't get the lob, but that one he got down. Slam from Wahi. 12-point lead for Lake Taylor closing out the first half here. They've got it back on the run. Can Jamestown make some adjustments defensively? Well, they got to get on Ahmad Elliott. He's open for three, and that's going to be in. Might want to put somebody on him in the corner. He knocks that down. 35-22, 13-point lead for Lake Taylor as we get into the second half. A near steal there, and it's that masked man, Diamante Brown, throwing up top of the key. It'll be Evan Wang with the basketball resetting. 
Now they get the post, high post feed to the low post. Oh, great movement there. Michael Schmidt from Swain, count it. Swain with a nice feed inside. Schmidt and one, but it is still an 11 point lead for Lake Taylor as we move to later in the quarter. Meanwhile, the same move, Swain to Schmidt, the extra pass to Brown who finishes and one. Oh, you gotta stop that masked marvel. He will kill you in the end, Brown. And it is two point, two point lead for Lake Taylor. That lead has shrunk. Uh, Brown, the Wang brothers, Swain and Schmidt, they've got Jamestown thinking upset here. Ooh. A spin move from Wang and it's good. Oh, filthy. That was a nasty move from Wang in, in the middle of the paint there. Coach Bridgeforth building this program amongst some other contenders in the Bay Rivers like Smithfield and Grafton. Lake Taylor knowing the pressure of trying to advance with being the favorite to win a state championship in four this year. Travis oh. Smith misses the dunk. He doesn't do that very often, but he makes up for it with the two. He got his own rebound, but he blew his own highlight. You blew your highlight, but he did get the points. Now he's been, know, been known for those highlight real jams this year. Three point game. And here comes Jamestown. And it's Brown with the miss, but Smith took the rebound and back the other way. Oh, there he is. Okay, he made up for it. He made up for it. Smith stuffs that one. Doesn't want to blow too many dunks as that guy can throw down some impressive ones. A six point lead for Lake Taylor. Jamestown's not done yet. However, Joe Bryant's free throw is going to make it hard. A seven point lead ends up being an eight point win. Feisty effort for Jamestown, showing a lot of guts and guile here on the road. However, it's Lake Taylor moving to 20 and four overall and punching their ticket to the state tournament behind 15 points from Wahi. Ahmad Elliott chipping in 12, while Mason Wing had 13 points. Diamante Brown with 13 for Jamestown. The Eagles finish out the year at 17 and six overall. We go from Eagles to other Eagles as we go to the 6A South, and it's now the Landstown Eagles as they go into battle against Woodside. The Wolverines at home under an interim head coach and Steve Jesowitz filling in for Ed Huckabee, gone for undisclosed reasons. Lansdowne, they've been to the state tournament final four each of the last two years at VCU. To get back there, they have to beat Woodside on the road. Woodside in the white, and there's a good way to start this game. Right off of the tip, it's Devonte Carter straight in. Now the talented six foot three point guard making things happen all year long for the Wolverines. This shot will be no good for Maurice Jones, but there is Darius Evans with the basket, the Coastal Conference Player of the Year. Meanwhile, they get back quickly, and Carter just goes straight in. If not going to check him, he's going to go right in. And a good roll for Carter to finish that one. A strong athletic floor leader for the Wolverines. Now it's Darius Wallace going inside for two, and Lansdowne showing their experience and composure on the road early in the first quarter. Lake Taylor trying to hang on here. Fire from outside. Merry Christmas. It's Michael Christmas from three point. The freshman has been paying off all year long for Dwight Robinson's squad. Now Maurice Jones attacking the hoop. In the middle of the paint, getting it to go. Lansdown with an early lead. Woodside, though, coming right back with Tajay Jacobs. Count it, plus the foul. Inside finish for Jacobs. And as we finish the first quarter, it is a one-point game. Woodside coming back to take the lead. And Jacobs once more. He's going to the hoop, and he's going to get it to fall. Six of seven from the field for Jacobs. That was a strong finish from Jacobs on that baseline drive. Here back the other way. Tipped, rebound, still loose. Picked up. Jones gets his own rebound. He's patting his stats. Gets his own rebound and scores. Remember, two years ago, it was Lancetown beating Woodside on a buzzer beater from Darius Bolstad. Jawan Davis remembers that. He doesn't want it to happen again. He gets a steal and a layup. Nice finish there from Davis. I mean, watch this pass. Forbes over to Jacobs and all the fit. That's a hockey assist. Come on, man. You got to credit a hockey assist for that one. The unselfishness of the Wolverines paying off in this matchup. Now Carter, look at the acrobatic play, and he gets hurt here. He would bounce back up off the mat, though and play the rest of the game, but just a tremendous move by Carter. And we head to the second half. It is a three-point Woodside lead. Here comes Darius Wallace trying to lead Lansdowne back. He gets it to go. Wolverines looking to answer. Carter kicking it out to Davis in the corner for three. Off the mark, but look at the little fella. Quincy rebound, put his nose in there for the offensive putback. Look at that. Here is Coach Robinson. He's not happy. That, that's not a happy look. No, he's shaking his head no when you asked him if you like that. No, That's not a, not a happy coach right there. Orlina off the inside pass. He finishes strong. Leading score for Woodside in this game off the bench. It's a block by Jordan Forbes. Lansdowne unable to get it to go before the horn sounds. A 10-point Woodside lead. Can they hang on this time? We'll find out. Inside, off the glass. What do you get for Christmas? You got him a glass. Off the glass, he scores. A win for Lansdowne. That'd be a good present for them. But here it is. Jordan Forbes on the other end. Transition game for Woodside. Just so dangerous and a big reason why they're up double figures. And the dish inside and the finish inside for Marks. 41-29. Woodside with the lead. Under four minutes to play. And look at the teamwork there. Carter, Davis, Jacobs, the law firm. And it's a basket. <laughs> 
another hockey assist. We got to get these guys second assist. Meanwhile, nobody plays defense and right back the other way and scoring easily. Eric Marks now Darius Evans for three. Can't get it to fall. Lansdowne was two of 16 from three. Here comes Woodside though. Tajay Jacobs throw Ooh. it down. Jacobs with a strong finish up ahead and they love it over there in Woodside. Look at him jumping up and down. They are happy. There's a reason to be happy. 53-45, the final over Lanstown. No tears this time for Alina and Carter. Sophomores two years ago when Lanstown broke their hearts, they're going to the state tournament as they combine for 24 points and 15 rebounds. Meanwhile, Lanstown's season ends at 17 and seven overall. Michael Christmas led the way with 11 points, while Maurice Jones had eight points and seven rebounds in his final game in a Lanstown uniform. Well, that's a lot of games, a lot of scores, a lot of teams moving on. Let's try to make some sense of it all. We got some. Who's going where and when are they going? Uh, the brackets are being messed up if you made predictions, but you know what? We're getting close to the nitty gritty in state tournament time. Here's what we've got in 6A South. You've got Oscar Smith getting ready to take on Cosby in the regional semifinals, Andy. Both teams are going to states. Cosby's at 18 and six, Oscar Smith at 21 and three, while Woodside and Hilton will have a rematch from a game in December that Hilton won by double figures. Meanwhile, in the north, you've got Westfield, West Springfield, Battlefield, and West Potomac moving on. Westfield got to the state championship last year and lost to Colonial Forge. They're the favorite, having won 21 straight games. What else we got? Who's moving on as we go to the 5A division? 5A was the upset bracket. You know when you do your March Madness pools and you fill it out and you have to throw it in a trash can? You would have thrown away your 5A South bracket because the four teams that lost, Green Run, Bethel, defending champ Henrico, and Verona, were combined 84 and 13. Yeah. We've got moving on Hampton, Norview, LC Bird, and Deep Run. Keep an eye out for LC Bird finally getting the monkey off their back by beating Henrico. Meanwhile, Potomac in 5A North, probably the favorite, just two years ago, they won the state championship. So I tell my bracket's usually done by like 30 minutes into the tournament. So. <laughs> 4A, what do we have here? Lake Taylor and Eastern View might be on a collision course. Eastern View, one of just two undefeated teams in the state at the group 4A level with a record of 24-0 overall. Who's the other undefeated team? Who is it? Do you know? I... No idea? It's Loudoun Valley. Loudoun. 4A West, they're probably the favorite, but they've got to get past GW Danville in order to keep their undefeated season moving on. In the 3A, what do we got? We got Norcom is sneaking in. Oh, they're the favorites. They've won two state championships in 4A. Now they're going to try to do it in 3A. John Marshall won it two years ago in 3A. Those two could meet again in the state tournament. Don't rule it out. Watch out for out west. Northside and Spotswood. Northside's lost only one game all year. One of those was to Cave Spring, however. We did see Cave Spring. They're a pretty good team out there. 2A, here we go. Watch out for George Mason and 2A East. They're undefeated. Andy Dan River won a state championship two years ago, but last season they lost to Martinsville in the state final. Martinsville, the prohibited favorite to win 2A. And finally, the 1A joke. Alta Vista's won three consecutive state championships. It's not going to be easy, though, because they'll have to get through the likes of Lancaster, Surrey, Northumberland, and others. And then in 1A West, it is loaded. Honeaker is undefeated, led by Tanner Robinette, who earlier this season scored 53 points mm. in a game. Watch out for Radford as well. We've got more of all that action coming to you next week right here on Sports Report.